Praise the Lord, church. I'd like to welcome everyone back to another online service. As the pastor says, hope that everyone is staying saved and safe. I'd just like to go over a few quick announcements for everyone. Remember, if you have any prayer requests, names to add to the prayer list, or any praise reports, please send those to cljcrequests at gmail.com. Uh, since we're unable to pass around the, the fasting calendar, please continue up to do your, your normal dates. Uh, if you're feeling extra generous, you know, throw a few extra meals on there. Well, we need fasting 24-7 during this time. Uh, remember when all of our videos drop, uh, it's 8 a.m. on YouTube for Sundays, 10 a.m. on Facebook for Sunday service. Uh, Brother Thomas's lessons on Wednesdays are available on Wednesday at 5 p.m. on both platforms, as well as our Sunday school lessons that drop on Friday night are available on YouTube and Facebook at 5 p.m. Uh, just want to continue to let everyone know that while we're down here, we're continuing to pray over the names in the box, the soldiers, everything that the elders prayed for when we had service. We're continuing to pray for those things, and also the pastor is continuing to read out the names on the prayer list, and he's continuing to pray for them daily. Lastly, we just want to continue to thank everyone that makes this possible. Uh, thank the choir for the songs. Thank Brandon Need for opening their house up to me. I uh, thank for, for everyone that gets the messages ready. Those are down here recording, everyone that edits, uploads, and any part that you played in this. We just want to thank everyone. We thank the pastor for trusting us to do this, and most of all, we want to thank God for making this possible. So, you guys need anything, need help with anything, need someone to talk to, just if you need anything at all, just reach out to us, call, text, email, stop by, whatever it is. We love you guys. We want to help you, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in And then a little light from heaven filled my soul It bathed my heart in love And broke my name above And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell him all about our troubles He will hear our pain is crying And he will answer by and by prayer will turn and you will know that a fire is burning you will find a little talk to jesus makes you cry i may have doubts and fears oh my eyes may fill with tears but jesus is a friend who watches day and night i go to him in prayer he knows my every care just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our pain is crying. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in, you will know that a fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. I'd like to welcome everyone back to another online service. Uh, let me be the first to wish everyone a happy New Year's. Hope everyone had a, a good, safe, and a Merry Christmas as well. Uh, remember to send any prayer requests, praise reports, names to add to the prayer list to cljcrequests at gmail.com. Uh, as always, if you missed the major announcements, please feel free to, to rewind right back to those and catch those. Um, and again, we're still asking everyone to continue and pray, pray and fast for Zach Carter, getting a little tongue-tied today. Uh, today we're continuing on with our Sunday School lessons. Uh, this one will be Lesson 3, Greater is He that is in you. The focus thought is, Jesus came in the flesh to save us and to give us the power to overcome the world. Lesson text is Luke 2, 6 through 11. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. 
And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And other lesson text is 1 John 4, 1 through 6. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because, excuse me, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, God, we love you, God, we praise you, God, we thank you for what you've done. Uh, thank you for the blessings in the church and keeping the cancer out of our travelers safe, our soldiers safe, our children safe. God, all the financial blessings, the spiritual blessings, just so much you've done for us, God, everything that you've done for us, God, we're not worthy of what you've done, God, but you continue to bless us time and time again, God, we're forever thankful for that, God. Ask the Lord to bless this service, God, use it for the building your kingdom, God, give me a right word of knowledge and a word in season, God, don't let me say too much and don't let me say too little, God, let everything be your words, God, let this word go out, let hearts be pricked, let lives be changed, God, let people see that you are the greater one, that there's no one greater than you, and we can accomplish all things through you, God, and ask the Lord to bless all those that are suffering with this virus, God, we see the numbers ticking up, but we know, God, you can speak that word of healing that your word says you can speak and take this thing away and touch all those that are suffering with it, all those that are fighting it on the front lines. God, our police officers, our firefighters, everyone, God, you can move for them. God, touch the leaders of our nation. Give them wisdom and knowledge in this time. God, bless our church. Touch the pastor. Give him wisdom and knowledge in this time, too. God, God, do whatever it takes for us, God, to be able to come to the house all gathered together again. God, we give you all the praise and the glory for it, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Dwayne likes to say, you may be seated. Uh, a decent portion of today's lesson focuses on the oneness of God, something most of the saints by now should be very familiar with it, that they should know by heart. But as we know, not everyone grasps it as easy as it should be grasped. And it's a, it's a tough concept for some people to understand. And it's also nice of us are nice for those of us who, who do know it by heart to to get a reminder to get a refresher on it because of uh, you know we think about oneness and we like you know Jesus is God and everything but just how important that is for the salvation process and it's important to remind ourselves why the oneness of God is important and <coughs> excuse me I'm just warning you guys now there's there's quite a few scriptures I may give Thomas a run for his money this week uh, this time of the year it's it's impossible to, to escape the Christmas story. I know this is airing on New Year's Day a little bit after Christmas, but it's still that, that time and season. You know, Mary's with child, there's no room at the end. Angels are appearing out of nowhere. Shepherds out there watching their flocks, seeing angels. And then all of a sudden there's a birth that's not like any other birth that's ever been before it or a birth that's ever been after it. This child was unlike any before him and any after him. People say he's the reason for the season, and he is the reason for the season, but he's more than just the reason for the season. He's the reason for everything. This child that they called Jesus, everything changed when he came into the world. In life, we all have events that, you know, alter or affect our outcomes. You have graduations, you know, pre-graduation life is Life's good. Life's just a big party. You got no major responsibilities. You don't even know how hard it is dealing with the IRS. You never had to deal with income taxes coming out or your paycheck. But post-graduation, that's when the real world kicks in mm -hmm. for people and it comes knocking on your door. One event, that one event, that graduation marks life when you were a child and then when you graduate, you move on into adulthood, weddings, deaths, births, all events that alter 
the course of our lives. We have things that shape each and every generation. For my great-great-grandparents, it was the attack on Pearl Harbor, when in an instant we went from a rock-solid isolationist nation to where we didn't want to have anything to do with Europe and Asia and all their problems, to that one morning, then all of a sudden we became gearing up for war and everyone began to enlist in the military. The next generation had uh, a lot of upheavals in the 60s, but one that sticks out is the JFK assassination. Then the next generation had the fall of the Berlin Wall and symbolization of, of fall of communism and the end of the Cold War. And then, you know, in my generation and generations after that, it's been shaped by 9-11. By Go watch a, a movie that has an airport scene, you know, something that was filmed in the 90s versus something you see today. You know, the, the lack of airport security seems so strange to us now, one event has upended the way we travel for nearly two decades. I know the other day, uh, every Christmas, we try to at least watch you know, the, one of the Home Alone movies. We were watching the one where he gets on the plane in the airport, and they just let him on the plane. And Mom's like, there's no way they would let him on the airport. And I'm like, you got to remember, this is pre-9-11. Everything was lax back then. My only flight experiences have been after 9-11, so th seeing things before that, it's strange, but, but that one event has completely changed everything. And, and all these events are, are massive, grand events, but there's only been one event that's changed the lives of every single person or had the chance to affect every single person on this earth for over 2,000 years, and that's the birth of Jesus Christ. And why is the birth so special? Because it was God himself, and you've heard that pretty much in, in every message the, the past couple weeks that we've had, that it was God himself coming down to be robed in flesh, to experience what we experience every day and to give us a chance at salvation. Isaiah 59 and 20 says, And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. And Romans 11, 26 says it like this. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Out of Zion, the Savior, a Redeemer, a deliverer is going to come, born just six miles outside of Jerusalem. He came down to save us and become a ransom that none of us could even come close to paying. And, and thinking about this lesson, I couldn't stop thinking about the scripture. You know, what is man that thou art mindful of me? Who am I? Who are we that God would do this for us, that he would take time and come down here on earth and robe himself in flesh just so we could have a chance at salvation? Christ, the Messiah, the, the promised one, that's who he was. And now there are many that say he was, you know, the son, the capital S son of God. You know, Jesus being separate, you know, from him, that Jesus was the Savior, but he was still separate from God, a third person in the Godhead. But that doesn't exactly jive with what the Word has to say. In Isaiah, it says there's only one Savior. In Isaiah 43, 10 and 11, it says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, he's reiterating this point here, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Now Jesus himself said that he was around before the foundation of the world. Before the world, anything was created, Jesus said, I was around. We were in that same glory together. And so you look at this, and there's only two ways to reconcile these scriptures, and that's either that during this time in Isaiah, there were two saviors in heaven, and that verse 11 is wrong, which we know is impossible, or the correct way of looking at it is the same savior in Isaiah is the same savior that's talked about in the Old Testament, that Jesus was the same back then, as he's the same savior today. Luke 2 and 11 says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. If you look at that scripture, you'll notice that savior right there is capitalized. That's a capital S savior. And Strong says that means a deliverer that is God or Christ. That day God himself came down to be robed in flesh to save us. There's no two, there's no three persons in the Godhead. In the New Testament, in Colossians 2 and 9, it tells us, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, the Godhead, the whole divinity, what makes God God, it all dwelled in Jesus. The first church understood it. It was so easy they could. Even Isaiah, 
in the Old Testament. He hadn't seen Jesus, but he understood oneness back then before Jesus even walked the earth. And we've read it all, you know, last week and this week. We'll read it again. It's Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Any argument, any discussion you know, debate, whatever it may be, on who Jesus is should end with that scripture right there. He's the Son, and we just read that He's the Father. He is the mighty God, and if you dig deeper in the Old Testament, you'll find out that He is the Holy Ghost. When He breathed on the disciples, He said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He has given them the Spirit. He said, This is my Spirit. That is the Holy Ghost. And every title you read littered throughout the Word, it's all in Jesus, you have Elohim, Adonai, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, the Ancient of Days, the I Am. It all fully dwells inside of Jesus. For years, they had titles to describe the attributes of God and what he did for them. But now we've got the name. On that day in Bethlehem, we got something that Adam didn't have. We got something that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't have. David didn't have it. God told Moses, he said, Abraham, he's talking about his friend Abraham. He said, they knew me, but they didn't know the name Jehovah like you know but Moses. I'm revealing the name Jehovah to you. Well, we've got something greater than what Moses had on that day. We've got the name of Jesus that covers every single thing. Solomon and all his wisdom, the smartest man that ever lived, did not know the name but now we have the name because he came down that one day for us. That's the name above every other name, the name that's not like any other name. Acts 4 and 12 says it like this, says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That, you got to pay attention to that must in there, that name of Jesus. We must be saved by that name. There in a manger, the first time, if you can try a picture in your head, uh, Mary and Joseph held him, and you get chills thinking about it. They said his name out loud for the very first time on earth. Jesus, the world changed. There was a shifting in the atmosphere. Man's course was forever altered on that one day that he was born. Something that's awesome, something that puts you in awe. And, I, and Pastor, I'm talking about the awesomeness of God that 2,000 years before I was even born, before I even walked this earth, God came down to save me and he came down to save you. And who am I that God would do such a thing for us? The God that created it all chose to come down for me and you and give us that wonderful name to be saved by. Some say Jesus was a good man. Some say he was a teacher. Some say he was a prophet. Amen. Many say that he is the, the son of God, the, the third person in the Trinity, but I know him as the Lord God, the one who called Abraham out of earth, the one who spoke to Moses in the burning bush, the one who heard his people's cries in Egypt, the one who led them, who parted the Red Sea for them and made them walk on dry ground, the God that content consistently delivered Israel out of the hands of their enemies. Hundreds of thousands of enemies slain before Israel, even though they were outmanned and outgunned almost every single time. They didn't have the weapons the other enemies had, but God delivered the enemies into their hands. I know him as the one that created it all, the one that said, let there be light. I think the pastor mentioned this last week, but John 1, 1 through 3, and then verse 14 it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And verse 14 says, and that Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And tying in with verse 14 is, is 1 Timothy 3 and 16. And it says, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in to glory. In the beginning was the Word, and that Word was God, and that capital W Word created everything that there was. And without that Word, there was no creation. And then that Word, it says, came down. It was robed in flesh, and it walked, and it dwelled among us, and we beheld Him. Man saw Him on the earth. You can't say there was a fake story. People, thousands upon thousands of people saw Him come down. The disciples saw him on a daily basis firsthand. And Paul backs up what, what John was talking about. He said that God was manifest in the flesh, that he himself preached to the Gentiles, the people in the world 
believed on him and that one day he was received up back in the glory. If you've ever debated uh, oneness versus the Trinity with someone, you've heard all the, the greatest hits, all the, you know, the great responses right. that, that we get to hear. I've, um, my, if you've had your kids in my Sunday school class, I'm sure they'll told you uh, doctrine's my bread and butter. I love discussing doctrine with people, you know, the oneness, baptism, that whole thing, salvation. And so I've heard pretty much every single one, but one of my favorites is when someone looks at me and says, you know, Jesus really never said that he was God. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, even though he said, I and my father are one. I've had people argue that. They said, oh, that just means they had similar characteristics. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Again, me and my dad have similar characteristics, what they're saying. But Jesus himself settled it for good in Revelation 1 and 8. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Look at that end right there. There it is, Jesus saying that he is the Almighty. Those words are the words written around. You'll have people talk about, well, we need to follow Jesus' words. Well, there's Jesus right there saying that he himself was the Almighty. The Almighty is strong, defines it, is the all. Yeah, that's right, Dwayne. Does that answer your question? <laughs> strong defines it as the ruling the all-knowing, the all-powerful, the ruling that is God as absolute and universal sovereign, the one who controls everything, the sun, the moon, and the stars, whose voice speaks things into creation, that is him. Jesus is saying, I am the Almighty. <laughs> and I spent all that time talking about the oneness of God, hoping that you'll see just how important it was on that one night that he came down. And it's emphasized so much during this time of the year, but we, we should emphasize that every single day, of every year. If he didn't come down, you wouldn't be here right now. And I'm not talking about being alive. I'm talking about having a chance of being in the church. If he hadn't come down to save us, think about where you would find yourself right now looking at eternity. You'd only have one choice. Without his redemption, where would you find yourself right now? But thankfully, we do have him. And he wants to be in our lives. He desires a relationship with us. He wants to communicate with us. He wants us to pray and talk to him actively on a daily basis. And he wants to participate in our everyday lives. Uh, decisions we go through, he wants to be consulted on and he wants to lead us and bless us. That, that shalom should get us excited, should make us, make us happy that the Lord God desires to talk to us, to have a relationship with us. If Donald Trump or Jeff Bezos came knocking on your front door and says, I want to have a personal relationship with you. I can tell you people would cry, scream, jump, pass out. Man, you, you think an altar call is big. If Donald Trump came to somebody's door, people would be like, whoo, you know, it's about to get big. But those are just men. And I don't want to have a personal relationship. I mean, I like, you know, people, but I want to have a special relationship with God. And so why aren't we getting excited that the God of heaven and earth would want to have a personal relationship with us? Uh, a lot of people pass off, yeah, I talk to him, I pray and I fast sometimes, but God himself want, desires out of billions of people, he wants a relationship with you. Think how special that you are, that, how just special that is that God wants to have a relationship with you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If you've got God, then you've got something that all the money in the world can't buy. You've got something greater. Greater is he that's in you than any politician, any president, any king, prince, CEO, whatever it may be, he is greater than all of those things. You've got love, you've got joy, you've got peace, you've got power that this world can't even come close to offering. And that relationship that he wants, he requires growth from us. And and when you grow, that means you have to set certain things aside in order to move on. You know, let things decrease so God can increase in your life. 1 Corinthians 13 11 says, When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul saying, when I was a child, I did childish things. But one day, I grew up, and I put those things and my childhood behind me, and I moved on into adulthood. The, the other day I was talking to Brandon uh, and, and talking about how it stinks to, to get old, and we were talking about playing video games, and if you all know me, way back in the day I used to play uh, quite a few, and I mean a lot, and I was ranked at least you know in the top 50, maybe 30,000. I had several million people on Call of Duty back during that time. Straight out of high school I wasted 
uh, 800 to 1,000 hours just playing one game in that series in just one year. I could listen to my audio Bible eight or nine times during that time. I, I think about it often, how much time I wasted back then. But now 10 years later, things are quite different. I don't have the time and I don't have the desire that I, I, I once had for those things. After Thanksgiving, I didn't have anything for school. We, we were closed down for work and we'd already done our recording for the messages this week. So I, I popped on an old game I used to like from my childhood and I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll break this out and get back into it. It was something I used to enjoy, but, but a few hours in, I just sat there wondering like, what drew me to play this way back in the day? Because I was sitting there and I was bored and I just got up and I turned it off and I haven't went back to it since. And I told Brandon, you know, if I dabble in anything now, it's mainly something that with strategy that involves working my mind versus running and gunning and, and doing anything. And that eventually, you know, I'll probably just stick to playing solitaire all day every day. And there's nothing wrong with that, Brother Tim. I know he would, he'd be giving me an amen right now. Maybe one day I'll bring my laptop and we'll play together. You know, but, you know, something that I, that I once loved when I was younger doesn't have the same draw to me now that I'm older. And in Christ, those things we, we once enjoyed in the world, you know, should now be no longer of interest to us or even a part of our lives. Those childish things keep us from maturing to moving on to perfection as Christians. And at first, the baby needs help with everything that it does, but over time, it begins to learn to, to do things for itself. It starts with crawling and then walking and moving from milk onto solid foods and being able to, to feed itself. You know, it learns those things as it gets older, and that's no different for us in our spiritual walks. We all, every single one of us started out as babes in Christ. At first, we needed help with everything, and I probably told the story, you know, when I was younger, starting to get serious about God. I, I wanted to get involved. I wanted to pray. The only thing is, I didn't know exactly how to pray, so one night, we was at a church service, it was altar call, and the front was full, so mom was back at her pew, and I said, I wanna pray, but I don't know how. So she took me by the hand and she said, say what I say, and that night she taught me how to pray. When I first started out, I had no idea how to pray. But 20 years later, I uh, I'm getting a lot of awes here. 20 years later, I don't need help when I go to pray because I've matured in that area. Once I needed my hand held, now, I'm fully able to do it on myself and because I've matured in that area, I no longer need uh, my hand held. I've grown up in, in my walk with God and I moved a lot further than where I was on that one night. A, a deeper walk with God and doing more for God will require you to constantly grow. And when you constantly need to grow, you constantly have to put other things behind you. And that growth leads us to knowledge and understanding and allows you to stand on your own two feet and it helps arm and prepare you for whatever trouble, whatever trial, whatever enemy comes against you and it helps you stay vigilant because we all know the devil's out there like a roaring lion. John said that the spirit of Antichrist is out among us and later on he would go on to say that there are many Antichrists that are out there. There are false prophets and false teachers leading people astray in Galatians 1, 7 through 8 says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or any angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. There are people out there that are perverting the gospel. They're changing what the gospel says and what it stands for. And, and listening to those changes can get you distracted sometimes. And once you're distracted, that's when it's real easy for the enemy to slip in through your door because you've got it left open and he can sneak in. And then once he's in, that's when he begins to wreak havoc in your life. Be careful of who you listen to, where you're teaching and where your teaching comes from, your teaching and preaching, I'm sorry, comes from. The gospel is the good news of Jesus. Everybody knows it's the good news of Jesus. But a big portion of that good news is exactly who Jesus is. You can't talk about the gospel without talking about the oneness of God because oneness is an integral part of that gospel. And I'm not your pastor, so I'm just telling you how I approach things. Um, so, you know, if there's someone teaching or preaching and if their doctrine doesn't line up with what's in the Bible, I really don't give it any time of day because I don't want any part of that if it's not in the world. And I had a guy 
for months and months at one time, he said, you need to listen to this minister. I'm not going to name the minister, but he's big into prophecy. He has big prophecy conferences. He's on, I think, TBN. He's on Facebook and everything. He's got a large following. And he says, you, you need to listen to him. You need to listen to him. And I was polite and polite. And finally, one day, I had a, what I call a Dwayne moment. I just let something slip out, you know, without, <laughs> without filtering it. And I... And I, maybe a little bit of Charlie Clark put on there too. And I said, buddy, unless he's preaching oneness, Jesus' name, Acts 2.38, salvation, then I, I don't want to listen. And I said, I'll just tell you, I've never even listened to Billy Graham because of the same exact thing. And, and he couldn't believe that part. And, I, and I'm not judging any of those people, any of those other ministers. I'm just very careful of where I get my teaching and my preaching from. Jesus said that one day false Christs and false prophets would arise working signs and miracles, and if it were possible, the very elect, the very chosen by God, the very sa the people that were going to be saved would be deceived. And so, be careful where you get that from, because one day people are going to get distracted and being led away by false teachers. Now, when the elect gets deceived, it's not going to be the Muslim group. It's not going to be the Pope. You know, someone has contrary to what we've been taught. It's going to be someone that's, being, that's teaching a very similar message to us that's just going to be changed just a hair bit. And that's what's going to lead us astray. So be careful of who you listen to. Now, that I'm not knocking. They're good people but their doctrine's a little bit wrong, and you gotta be careful, as Paul said, about where you get your gospel and where you get your doctrine from. But thankfully, God has given us things that help us stay, that keep us from falling prey. He gave us the word, and he gave us the Holy Ghost, him dwelling inside of us and guiding us. God inside of us, I think Brother Dwayne talked about it, and think how amazing that is that God wants to dwell inside of his people, surrounded by worldly things, on a daily basis, overcoming the world on, on our own is impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. He overcame the world, and he came back with the keys in his hand, and now he's dwelling inside of us. And whatever may go wrong, whatever temptation you know, may come my way, or what, troubles, trials, whatever it may be, I know I'll be able to make it through because I have something greater on the inside than what's on the outside in my current situation. And I'm starting to wind her down here a little bit. So greater is he, the Bible says, is in you than he that is in the world. Storm after storm may come, but with God you're going to weather everything. He's that old lighthouse that's standing on the shore, as the pastor talked about a couple weeks ago. It's weathered storm after storm, hurricane after hurricane, and they get, it's taken the, the hardest beatings ever, but it's still there standing. You look at what the apostles went through, beatings, mockings, prison, chances of death on a daily basis, but they made it through every single time because they were full of the Holy Ghost. What was inside was greater than what the adversary stood before them. Something obviously that had, had changed on the inside of the apostles, and, and Paul's a good example of a, of a completely 180 degree turn. And, and I don't know in anyone that enjoys getting beat. Um, you know, me and my brother used to fight and, you know, getting hit or kicked or anything like that. I never, you know, got excited about that aspect of, of brotherly love. But the apostles rejoice, and it says they count, they rejoice because they counted it as, you know, great joy to them because they were worthy to be beaten for the name. They were worthy to be suffering, to su have sufferings for the name. And what they do, they kept going back day after day after day to preach and teach Jesus. And you and I can have that same thing. Because of him, we can receive the power that he promised. Paul said, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not one thing can stand in the church's way. No enemy, no devil in hell can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe when it comes to face, face-to-face -face with someone that's completely full of the Holy Ghost. Through him, we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Through him, demons can be cast out. The lame can walk, the dumb can talk, the blind can see again. Even the dead can be raised. Nothing is impossible for him that dwells inside of us. Jesus said, greater works will you do than I do. How, how exactly is that possible? How did Peter's shadow heal people? How was Philip able to take a two days journey in the splink of an eye? How did shackles fall off and prison doors open? There was something greater, something 
that move, was moving in the situations that uh, uh, every single person in, the, in those situations had, they had something greater on the inside than what was facing them on the outside. God never changes. The same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost, the same Holy Ghost that was there Amen. with Peter in the prison, and when the Holy Ghost was there when the church was praying for Peter when he was in the prison, it's the same Holy Ghost we feel here in the church, and it's the same Holy Ghost you feel out there in your homes, and it's the same one that dwells in each and every one of us. The same Holy Ghost that dwelt in Peter on Pentecost is dwelling in me to this day. And if he did it all for them, all those many signs and wonders and works and deliverances, then he can do that for us. And, and I'm closing with this point. And I like how, uh, how the book, if you guys read it, um, how it closes the lesson. It, it poses the question. It says, what would you do if you knew you could never fail? Would you start a new business? Would you fulfill a, a lifelong dream? Would you take a big risk? Uh, it says that the fear of failure often keeps us from doing any of those things. And Jesus himself said we would do greater works than he did. And that's, that's hard for us to fathom, but Jesus gave us that promise, and we know his promises are yea and yea. They never fall right. to the ground. And that happens when we trust God, when we use the power that he has given us, when you finally realize that what's on the inside is greater than what's on the outside that you're facing. You want the power? You want the gifts, you want the healings, the signs and wonders that, that the first church had. Well, it's time that we start acting like the first church, to be just like the first church. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us the power to do all those things. So let's exercise some faith. Let's exercise some trust in God to let him work and fulfill that promise that, you know, greater works will he do, that we will do than he did, because greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we exalt you. Lord God, we thank you that you came down, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you for that chance of salvation, that you came down, that God, you were beaten and mocked and crucified for us, God, and you didn't even have to do it, but you loved us so much, God, that you came down and suffered for us, God, to give us a chance at salvation. God, help us to never squander that chance. God, God, think about our lost loved ones today. God, bring those people in. God, all those that have grown call on you as the past pastor says the sorry of the church, God, rekindle that fire. God, help us to all see just how special it is and how amazing it is what you did for us on that one day when you came down, God, and you changed our past. You changed man's course completely, God. Help us to see, God, that you are greater than what we can face. Any trouble, any trial, any mountain that we face, God, that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, God, that with you in us, that you dwelling in us on a daily basis, God, we can stand up to anything. We can face anything, any day devil and hell, any sickness, trouble, trial, whatever it is, God, that you can move because you are greater than all of those things. God, again, we thank you for your blessing, for keeping cancer out of the church, our travelers safe, our soldiers safe, our children safe. And just thank you so much for everything that you've done and that you constantly do for us. And thank you for keeping us during this time and making a way for us, God, to continue to share your word with people, not just in Bland, but we found out all across the world. God, we thank you for your blessing and moving in that way. I ask Lord to bless your people again, help but keep us united, help your people stay faithful and watching these videos and bless the pastor give him wisdom and knowledge in this time and strength during this time god we give you all the praise and the glory for it lord in jesus name we pray amen <laughs>
Get heavy and the hill will not be hard. 